I'm Kim Hankins, and welcome to the Sustainability Center at McHenry County College. Thanks so much for asking me to record this video on recycling and the 2021 Green Guide Recycling Directory. So let's get right to it. So when is it going to be available? Well, it's going to be available live April 17th. All you got to do is check our website. So that's www.mchenry.edu slash green. There'll be a button that will look just like this and you can click on it and download the, the green guide right away. So, or if you want to pay for a copy, if you don't want to download it, you can email us at sustainability at mchenry.edu. Again, that's sustainability at mchenry.edu. So also, we are always looking for new information. So if you see something in the guide that you want to talk more about, feel free to reach out to us. If you want, to, if you hear some tips, some tricks, some information that you want us to include, absolutely reach out to us. Okay, so let's get to it. What's new this year? Well, first of all, it's a very simple change. We alphabetized the whole thing. I don't know why it wasn't alphabetized before, but it's now alphabetized. So appliances, batteries, bulbs, it goes in order. And it's each of the listings within each page are also alphabetized. So if you're looking for something specific, hopefully you'll be able to find it pretty quickly. There is a new section in the back um, called, What Do I Do With This? We get um, between 50 and 100 calls a month in the recycling, in the sustainability center. And they are all over the place with all sorts of hard to recycle items. So what we did was we took the top 10 to 15 and we did a deep dive onto the available resources for those items. We actually ended up with 18 because there were so many popular items. So just a few examples include mattresses. We get questions about mattresses all the time. Propane tanks, thermostats, microwaves, gasoline, smoke detectors, prescription medication. You can take a look at yourself and find all the information in here. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of references to different places. So please take a look when you get a chance. The other thing we added this year in the front is a tips to recycle, reuse, or refuse takeout containers and delivery packaging. There's also a little section on PPE, the personal protection equipment. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So takeout containers, there are some yeses and some no-nos for sure. So the clear plastic tub shaped container, round, rectangle, whatever, and the clear plastic clamshell containers are recyclable, okay? But the ones that cannot be recycled, and this, there's a lot of controversy about black plastic, but black plastic as a rule should not be put in your recycling bin. It's just a combination of a lot of the different types of plastic, and it's not great for our plastics recycling stream. Thin flat lids, like we put on top of a takeaway drink or something like that, straws of course, styrofoam, or especially those small sauce packets or the small sauce containers, they're just too small. Don't put them in recycling. Any utensils, any plastic, anything that says, oh, it's compostable, anything, our climate here is not warm enough for compostable serverware. If it's something you want to talk more about, I'm happy to bring that up later. But here in, on at MCC, we do not have compostable serverware because it is not compostable. Any compostable containers though are compostable, but don't put them in your recycling stream. Okay, they are to compost them instead. Now the delivery packaging, there's a lot to talk about on this, and I'm just gonna hit a few of the highlights. Um, there are a lot of companies that will offer a low impact shipping option, and it's worth it to check. It's worth it to, if they've got a little web chat or something, just ask the question, is there an option for a low impact shipping option? A lot of times they will put orders together in one box. I don't know about you, but I've certainly ordered something from Amazon, and it comes in three different boxes, and it's frustrating. Um, Amazon has two initiatives I want to mention. One is called Amazon Shipment Zero, um, and that will tell you a lot about the sustainability initiatives at Amazon, because there's a lot going on with Amazon and you could definitely take a look. There's also Amazon Second Chance, and that's for packaging recycling tips, uh, reuse options, those kinds of things. So those are the two from there, Amazon Shipment Zero and Amazon Second Chance. Of course, most of us know to ask for as few boxes as possible, but sometimes you can request a low impact shopping option. Bubble wrap, bubble wrap can be um, dropped off to recycle with your other plastic films, like your grocery bags. Make sure to pop it first. There's no point in recycling air, no point in taking up space. 
um, don't put bubble wrap in your curbside recycling. Um, cardboard boxes, of course, we know to remove all the packing material and flatten those boxes. The plastic pillows or bags, you know, those little puffed up air things that sometimes will cushion things, which are great because they don't, you know, they don't take a lot of space, but pop them and you can recycle them with, again, your grocery store uh, film recycling collection boxes. Um, you wanna make sure, sometimes there are some specific instructions on those pillows, because sometimes they're made with some other stuff, but take a look. There's more information on plastic envelope mailers, um, plastic envelope um, boxes, the styrofoam, certainly styrofoam, we all know that that is not recyclable in our curbside. So definitely don't do that, but there are lots of options. And the green guide, it's on page 11. So 11 has all of our styrofoam options. Um, the other thing that's new in our 2021 green guide are all the details for McHenry County's Household Hazards Waste Collection event in June of 2021. Yes, we are finally having one. I think it's been at least five years, if not a few more, since we've had one. They're very expensive to uh, conduct, so I'm really happy that the county has budgeted this to happen because it's really a good thing for us. The drive is on June 26th. It will be in Lake in the Hills. All of this is in the Green Guide, okay? It will be in Lake in the Hills um, near their sanitary district on Plum Street. Uh, the things they are taking are things like um, aerosols, acids, adhesives, um, antifreeze, uh, auto fluids, cleaning products, uh, drain cleaners, the really nasty stuff. So it's time to clean out from underneath your sink and get rid of all this stuff. Oil-based stains, paints, and varnishes, but no latex paint. They are not taking latex paint, so don't bring it and hope that they won't notice because they will. They'll also take pool chemicals, um, use motor oil. There's a big list in here, so make sure you check it out. The things they're not taking, um, they're not taking any medical waste. Uh, they're not taking latex paint, as I said. Uh, auto batteries, you can get money for auto batteries at a lot of the auto stores. There's a whole thing about batteries in here, so don't take them to the Household Hazardous Waste event. Fire extinguishers, don't take them. Um, ammunition, explosives, fireworks, any of that stuff. They're not taking all that stuff. Again, big list in the Green Guide, page 15. The event is June 26th from eight to three. And I would imagine it's gonna be a busy one. Um, some people have asked in the 2020 version, here's the 2020 Green Guide. We had an article in here about um, apps that you could use to resell, regift, re um, just, kind of reuse, repurpose some of your items. That article still exists on our website. So if you are a resale person um, and you know of one that's not on there, please let me know because we'd like to keep that um, article up to date because a lot of people use it. Uh, two things I want to mention and then we'll go to another topic. So there's two new things that I brought up in the green guide that I want you to be aware of. One is the how to recycle labeling system. There is a labeling system that's getting more and more popular right now. Um, hopefully I can show you a graphic during the video. If not, I'll show you after the video, but there is instructions. It is an instructive, it's not the numbers, but it is an instruction thing that talks about the packing material. It talks about the components, um, the programs available. For more on this, it's how to recycle Dot info. So it's how number two recycle dot info. And there's a lot more information about these. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's consistent across the board, but this is an initiative that's been growing and growing for the last few years, and you're starting to see it on a lot more packaging. So keep a lookout for that. The other thing I wanted to mention is a company called TerraCycle. Probably a lot of you are aware of TerraCycle already. Um, we use them here at the campus. They have something called zero waste boxes and they are collection boxes for some stuff that's really, really hard to recycle. Um, things like toys, coffee capsules, like the K-cup things, uh, pens and markers, candy and snap wrapper, wrappers, gloves, solo cups, the list goes on and on and on. These boxes are not free. You pay for them up front and then you fill them up and then the postage is already paid and you send them back to TerraCycle and they will either take them apart and recycle the components. For example, with the K-cup, coffee capsules, they take the capsules apart and they recycle the little foil tops, they recycle the plastic tubs, and they compost the coffee grounds. So that's a pretty cool thing because those K-cup single-use coffee maker things are pretty popular 
And so we have them scattered all over, these collection boxes scattered all over the campus. Um, before COVID, obviously they were very filled up very often, but now they're a little slower, but we imagine they'll pick up again. Um, but they have a ton of one, they have one for action figures. So if there's something in your house that you're finding that you really want to get rid of and you just don't really know where to go, check out TerraCycle, T-E-R-R-A-C-Y-C-L-E, TerraCycle.com. And um, they have a US version there, actually all over the world, which is pretty cool. They also have something called the Easy Pack program, uh, which are boxes for batteries, lamps, electronics, those kinds of things. So if you need to recycle a lot of fluorescent lamps, for example, a couple of years ago, we did some work in our basement and we had a lot of fluorescent tubes that we didn't know what to do with. So we bought one of their um, Easy Pack boxes. I think it was like $20. And we were able to put about 45 or so fluorescent bulbs in there and uh, it's all packed. It has comes with all the packing material and then you can track it. So the, the box goes back to TerraCycle and then you can track it being recycled. So it's, it's really a cool company and I'm um, really happy to share their information. So just a couple of tips and tricks and then we will stop with the video and we can go to some questions. Um, styrofoam. Okay, we talked a lot about styrofoam in previous in previous events. So styrofoam, this is an example of a really nice clean piece of styrofoam. And then you might open it up and you look inside, I don't know if you can see this, and there's grease in there. You have to throw this away. Um, grease in styrofoam really messes up the process. So don't automatically assume that your styrofoam is perfect. Um, take a look inside. I don't know what was in here, but it's pretty gross. There's grease in here. So don't, please throw that away. Don't put that in the recycling stream. I think by now we all know about plastic film. Um, I grabbed this one from my home. It's um, a box, it's a bag that we got some limes in and it has this like plastic, sort of fake plastic, I can't even describe it. It's like a netting in here. This would not be something I would put in my plastic recycling, my plastic film recycling, because I just don't know much, enough about this netting stuff. But if you have a clear plastic bag like this, without the netting, <clears throat> definitely collect those and put them with your grocery store plastic film connect collection spot. Um, I get a lot of questions about these Tetra Pak type milk things. Um, this is one for, this is an almond milk one, but they come in all sorts of stuff. They are very recyclable and you just put them in just like this. You can leave the top on, top off. We'll talk about that another time, but Tetra Packs are very recyclable. Um, so put the whole thing in there, flatten it if you can, obviously, because there's air in here. We don't recycle air. And, uh, but Tetra Packs are recyclable. So put that in there. Um, I'll get back to the tops on and off in just one second. So aerosols. There's a lot of worry and concern about aerosol. I talked to uh, four out of the seven haulers that are here in McHenry County. And they all said that these are empty, like really just spray it all out into your sink or whatever until it's really not doing anything. If they are empty, you can put them in your curbside recycling. If they are not empty, please don't do that. But if they're all the way empty, again, meaning just hold this down in your sink for as long as you hear any air coming out of there, you can recycle. One point, not paint, okay? Not spray paint. We're just talking like PAM or whatever you use a spray can for. <clears throat> but definitely not paint. Um, just to go back to the cap on, cap off thing. So there is definitely um, two schools of thought when it comes to the caps. These are very, very tiny. I would never recycle them by themselves. Really that anything this small is gonna get lost in the recycling system. But if you put it on here securely, after you flatten it, you can recycle it with the cap on. Same thing for soda, uh, bottles or uh, water bottles, but I know none of you use bottled water, so we don't have to talk about that. But soda bottles, anything that has a cap on it that the rest of the um, piece is recycling, recyclable, excuse me, definitely keep the cap on. Okay, so I know there's a lot of information running around about caps on, caps off. I call the haulers, I talk to what they'll do, they'll take it with the cap on. Um, just to circle back, I hope you will uh, grab a copy of the Green Guide. Um, this really was a labor of love this year. Um, I didn't have any students helping me, so I did it all myself, which was really fun because I got to talk to a lot of people I haven't talked to in a long time and uh, get a lot of good information. 
we are still trying to keep it relatively small so people can download it off the uh, off our website and get the information they need always 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 if you have any questions please call the sustainability center honestly best to email us now at sustainability at mchenry.edu of course you're always welcome to call me kim hankins my contact information is all over the green guide um, but my email is k my first initial last name hankins at mchenry.edu um, be happy to chat with you Thanks again for inviting me and I look forward to talking to you some more.